Welcome to Nick Detating Presents, uh, a genre author series on YouTube. Uh, my guest today is Scott Cole. How are you doing? Hey, doing well. How are you, Sean? Not too bad. It's a little hot, but you know, I live in the <laughs> desert now, so that comes with the territory. Yeah, well, I, I live in the city and it's hot here too, so. <laughs> Which city? Philadelphia. Ah, yes. I used to live in Boston, so I know your pain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the lack of trees and, you know. Yeah. Heat and humidity. It's its wonderful. Oh, yeah. Um, but you <laughs> have a, a new collection that is out now, Departures, from Black T-Shirt Books. That's Yes. Yeah, that's why I wanted to have you on. Awesome. Yeah, um, just, just came out. Ten new short stories. Yeah. So um, I guess to begin with, like... For people that maybe aren't familiar with your work, what can they expect from the collection? Oh, boy. Well, um, let's see. I guess my my earlier work, uh, I kind of started out in the bizarro scene. Yeah. Or kind of like bizarro horror. Um, and I feel like over each each one of my books, I've sort of like pushed slightly more toward horror or more toward uh, like weird fiction. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I would say that these new stories, uh, this is my second collection. My first collection slices, um, I think focused more on, well, there actually, there is a subtitle to slices and that was tales of bizarro and absurdist horror. And, uh, with these new stories in departures, I would say they're, um, probably a little less bizarro, uh, there's definitely still absurdist elements and there's general horror elements and weird elements. So I would say just strange, unusual horror stories with a, with a, uh, I don't know, a little, a little tinge of humor mixed in there as well. Yeah, I would say that's fairly accurate. Um, <laughs> is there any collection in it? Ugh. Sorry, let me take that again. Is there any story in the collection that you like the best? I know it's hard to pick, but... Oh, boy, yeah. I... Let's see. I love them all, of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they are my children. Um, boy, I don't know. I The first story I really like, it's called Egg House. Um, that's, that's probably one of my favorites. Uh, Clown Noses is another um yeah we'll go with those two cool those will be my my two picks <laughs> but yeah, yeah egg, house, uh, egg house is is uh is a favorite i think that skews a little bit more toward weird fiction and uh seemed like a good way to to start the collection off yeah absolutely um so this is through black t-shirt um i guess if you could talk to us a little bit about um well, I, you know, black t-shirt is like a press, but you described it to me off air as sort of like a collective almost. Yeah, it's uh, it's not really a press in the sense of um, something that that people can submit to. Um, it's it is more of a collective. It's it's uh, me and a few others, um, something that Adam Caesar started, and uh, so it's it's basically Adam Caesar, myself, uh, Patrick Lacey. Aaron Dries and Matt Serafini. And we've all had a few releases out through Black T-Shirt. And uh, yeah, no, I, I have both of my short story collections are out through there. Um, several novels and novellas from the other guys. Um, yeah, just a small, just a small little operation. I mean, I think that's pretty cool because I wasn't... Um... I mean, I wasn't entirely sure what it was, but like the idea of a collective kind of press is pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know. It's, it's convenient. <laughs> oh yeah. Definitely. It's nice. Yeah. Um, you know, oh, and yeah. I, do... I say this as someone that self publishes my work through my press. <laughs> yes. It's very convenient. <laughs> it's very convenient. And it Cause works you know, for... when it's like, Oh, should I take this new story? You know, yeah. you, you know, it's <laughs> like, well, I probably will take it. Yeah. Yeah, and I was going to say, very convenient uh, for me as well, because I do, uh, as you know, I do uh, graphic design and, and interior layouts for books and things like that. So I I do uh, pretty much all of the layout work for the various releases that come out uh, through Black T-Shirt. So 
I mean, so, that is admirable. Yeah, I've wanted to learn interior um, and maybe cover design for years, but just lazy. I don't know how else to. <laughs> it's just a lot of other stuff going on, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, how'd you get into graphic design? Um, well, I was always always an artist um, from a very young age, as far back as I can remember. Um, always had an interest in visual arts, and I was always drawing from a very young age. And uh, yeah, eventually it just kind of mutated into an interest in uh, things like advertising and marketing yeah. um, and graphic design. Um, I, for me, it's it's kind of a way sometimes not always sometimes it's it's purely uh like an artistic impulse yeah. uh when i'm working on like a, a cover um but interior design for example and, and other things you know i do i do design for other things than books um but it's it's almost a way for me to like kind of fuse a couple different portions of my brain where i can i can do the the creative thing but i can also I don't know. I have a thing for like, for, for organization, I guess. Um, so it kind of, it kind of tickles both of those areas and I can, I can meld them together in a way when I'm laying things out. Well, I am envious of you because I always hire out because I just, <laughs> the ebook stuff, especially nowadays, I'm like, I can't do this. Yeah. <laughs> well, even though they've made it easier than ever. Yeah. That's true. I should it, clarify. It can, I probably could do it if I tried. Yeah, I'm sure you could. It's, uh, but there are certainly hiccups and frustrations that pop up at the least convenient times. And... I mean, Kindle alone is just like, I swear in the last two years, it's been like this kind of file. No, now you can only use this <laughs> kind of file. Right. And they're changing it again. And they're changing it again. Yeah. Next I mean, time. I don't know if you've ever tried to, this is maybe obscure for some listeners but you ever tried to make an epub out of a kindle file it's just uh, like unless you're paying like yeah i i i have yes i have done epub files but i i don't convert them directly from kindle i don't even i'm sure there's a way but i've tried to do the auto convert say and it it just yeah. doesn't work <laughs> Yeah, there's, um, there's a number of different ways to go about it, but yeah, pr yeah it's probably, probably easier not just as much ground up. Much is probably interest. the easiest way. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you you told me you live in uh, Philadelphia. Yep. How long have you lived in Philadelphia? I have been here for let's see, about uh, yeah, almost twenty years. Oh, okay. In, so in a while. City. Um, and I lived. Uh, Prior to this, like when I was in uh, like middle school and high school, I lived in southern southern New Jersey or South Jersey, as we say in this okay. area. Um, so just kind of across the river from Philly. So I definitely have long-standing ties to this area. Yeah, but I but I you know left left the East Coast for a little while, came back about twenty years ago, and and uh, I've been living in the city ever since. Nice. Yeah, I lived in Boston for, um, let's see, from about 2009 to 2019. And now okay. I live in Santa Fe, which is technically still a city, but it's the population change is just drastic. Yeah. I went from like a couple mil to like, I think we're <laughs> under okay. 100,000. Oh, wow. Okay. It's more like a town, really. Yeah. I didn't realize it was that small. Interesting. I mean, I hope I'm saying that right, and it's not six hundred thousand, <laughs> but it's still. I mean, the point is, it's less than Boston. Noticeably smaller. Yeah. Noticeably smaller, yeah, and it's larger too. So unlike the East Coast, well, Philly's pretty big actually, but yeah, Boston is sort of like a condensed city with like a huge population. Yeah, it's similar to New York City, I guess, in that way. Mm -hmm. So you've written, um, obviously you've written other stuff. I read uh, Triple Axe, which you did, which is, I think, a novella, which I liked a lot. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. Thank you. Um, it was a lot of fun to write. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you have any plans to do uh, more novellas or longer works? Yeah. Um, I have I have tons and tons and tons of ideas. Um, the The problem is finishing them right yeah. <laughs> as yeah, as many if not most if not all writers know and understand um 
but yeah, I have ideas constantly. I'm always uh, jotting down notes. Um, I do. I do tend to think of myself primarily as a short story writer. Um, I think that's where I'm most comfortable writing, and I enjoy I enjoy writing everything from flash fiction to to longer short fiction. Um, the stories that are in uh, the new collection, Departures, are are you know not super long, but certainly longer than flash fiction. You know, yeah, they're, I'd they're say so. Maybe they, in the, they seem like mm, four thousand to six, maybe. Yeah, well, I was gonna say more like probably like three to. 3,000 to 4,500, oh, maybe 5,000, okay. maybe 5,000. Yeah, actually, yeah, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I have, I've written three novellas, uh, or I should say I've published three novellas. I have other things that have been in the works at yeah, yeah. various stages. And um, yes, I, I will publish more novellas at some point. Um, just a matter of completing them and, and figuring out what to do with them. Um, I do I do enjoy writing novellas as well. Uh, I don't think it comes quite as naturally to me as a short story does, but um, I still like it. I really enjoy reading novellas, um, and I like and I like short novels, just as a as a reader. Um, so I guess that's why I, I gravitated toward that the shorter end of the long form. No, it uh, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I may write a novel at some point. We'll see. I I was telling you before uh, that I have something that may be a novel. It may be a short novel. It might be two novellas. I'm not really sure. It's in the works. We'll see when it gets done, what it ends up being. <laughs> yeah, I think... Uh, I, I don't even know if I consider myself a novelist, even though I've written, like, f let's see, four or five? See, I don't even know the number. Well... I think as long as you've written one, you're a novelist. Okay, fine. Then I'm a novelist. Um, <laughs> Some people call I'm me. Like, I, I still <laughs> consider myself to be a novellaist. Like, yeah. I'm so much more comfortable in the um, probably 15,000 to 30,000 range. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, and I, you know, for a good decade, I was just doing mostly short stories. Like, it's a, it's hard to get used to because, like, it's just such a different... Like I was telling someone the other day, uh, the best example I have of writing a novel versus writing a short story is like short story, you get the idea and like tops, it's a month and it's very like condensed focus of like, this is the vision and like, we're going like fairly quickly and working on a novel is more like, okay, so this week I'm writing a lunch scene <laughs> and that's, that's the week. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely when you write longer form stuff, you really gotta spend the time focusing on on certain aspects, certain scenes. It's just like certain stuff you would never like writing a short story. You'd never in a million years be like, I'm gonna work on a on a hanging out at a cottage scene for how many weeks? <laughs> Where it's just them eating dinner. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> this meal is going on forever. I swear that's the hardest stuff for me because it's like. You know, obviously, the when the horror stuff shows up, I'm excited. And I'm yeah. like, yes, I know how to do this. There's a big monster, or we're fighting with a gun, or whatever. Um, or there's a knife. But, like, when it's just, like, people, I don't know, at a parade, or just, mm -hmm. like, people in a park, like, that's definitely what I struggle with the most. Yeah. The quiet moments, the the uh the character building moments i guess right <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i i joked with someone it's it's like jazz it's the notes you don't play but I'm, i don't even know if that's true <laughs> so it's like the horror scenes you don't write i don't even know it's a lot <laughs> i did the math the other day though and like i easily have oh my god let's see I think it was like 150,000 words of unpublished like material and that's like the stuff I like and plan to publish. Wow. Nice. I mean, I need to find homes for some of it. But... Well, sure, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's just a it's just yeah, once you start going into like longer form stuff, it's like I have how many words now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I have a lot of stuff that's in pro I have, you know, like my in progress folder. I have my my other folder that is like, you know, pieces that are complete ish, but 
will surely undergo another round or two of revisions, but you know, are, are pretty much complete. Um, between those, I don't even know how many words, but it's it's a lot of stories. I have tons of short stories. I mean, the that... other is I know the exact uh, number is because I got really into, speaking of organization, I got maybe hyper-focused on starting to list the exact word count um, on my works in progress just for my mm. own you know, benefit. Like, oh, I have a novella. How many words is it? So I'll just save mm-hmm. the file as like blah, 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 you know, 25,000. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I I mean. Well, it's good to know. I mean, absolutely. I mean, tons of writers are constantly posting, you know, how many words they wrote each day. So My record to date is 40,000 in two months, and that was writing my most recent novel, Goddamn Zombie Chainsaw Murder, which is out now. Sorry, I don't mean to self-plug. <laughs> um, Shameless plug. But yeah, no, like, I know it sounds fun, but the actual writing process was like, people think I'm joking when I say I went to bed with my hands numb. I'm like, no, that's not a joke. I couldn't feel my hands. Uh, I was doing 5,000 a week for two months. Yeah. Yeah. It, it takes a toll. It takes a, a physical toll. It takes a mental toll. Yeah. The physical uh, one is what people don't tend to talk about as much. Yeah. And I think maybe some people don't even fully understand the, the mental toll it can take. You can just be exhausted from sitting and looking at a screen. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, I consider myself now as an editor. It's like some of that is almost being like a like a life coach to people because so much mm-hmm. of uh, so much of writing is like a emo- very emotional. Yeah. Um, And I like to I like to tell people it's like if you have a short story, that's a certain amount of emotional uh, input, you know like weight you're putting into it novella you've got more because it's longer by the time mm-hmm. you get to a novel it's like it's very normal to have like a mini nervous breakdown <laughs> when you're getting into the editing stage because it's just like there's so much of me in this <laughs> maybe i won't write a novel oh uh, i mean no but it's, lot, it's lots of fun it's a ton of fun yeah i don't mean to scare people off um but yeah, let me think of what else we can talk about. Well, have you ever written anything uh, nonfiction or have you ever written comic scripts or scripts or anything like that? No comics. Um, I have written a few essays, a um, few things here and there. Uh, on uh, I know there, there was, what was it, last year, I think? Last, around last Halloween. I think it was last year. Maybe it was the year before. I can't remember. Time is so... Time, uh, from 2020 bizarre. on, I, I can't even keep track. Yeah, it's all, it's all, uh, it's it's a spider web instead of, <clears throat> excuse me, instead of a, sta- a straight line. Oh, yeah. Um, but on, uh, on Becky Spratford's uh, blog, I, I wrote an essay that was like a why I love horror uh, sort of thing. And I, I wrote another thing about um, uh, uh, Halloween trick or treating experience I had as a kid. So I've done, you know, a few a few little things like that. Um, you know, maybe I'll continue to do that, and maybe someday I'll I'll collect them all in one place. That could be kind of fun. Um, and I've written some like it's it's still it's not nonfiction, it's fiction, but they're um, more like comedy pieces i guess okay yeah no, like, that, that makes sense like i guess kind of like uh uh mcsweeney's type articles like comic article so comedic not not comic in the sense of comic books but oh yeah no no i knew what like you that. meant yeah yeah that's cool though i've written a lot of um i don't know i just tried out a lot of crap i don't know if i'm good at all of it but i've definitely <laughs> done a lot yeah i mean uh-huh. horror Horror remains my my true love, so most of my stuff incorporates that to some extent. But you know, there's always uh, there's always like a thread of humor somewhere in there. Yeah, it's funny. I've, I've I have the same thing going where it's like even when I approach, say, like a novel, like my current novel in progress, it's like about grief, uh, mm-hmm. and it also has sea monsters. And I'm like, there's no way this is going to have any humor in it. There's no possible way. And then it's like, oh, there's a dad joke. Oh, there's a weird joke. I'm like, why are there jokes in this? It's about, like, 
the grieving process and sea monsters. Well, I need to have some levity in there. Uh, yeah, so, no, it's just my personality, I guess. Yeah. I mean, anyone who says that's unrealistic, like, no, if a monster was chasing me down and I was hiding, I probably would be thinking jokes. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That's just how my sick. mind processes, I guess. <laughs> it's a coping mechanism. Oh, it's a, yes, a glorious coping mechanism. Um, <laughs> so what are some books lately that you've read that you've enjoyed, if you want to bother talking about that? <laughs> I I am currently reading uh Stephen graham jones latest um uh, my heart is a chainsaw and all right i'm enjoying that i had been meaning to get to it for quite a while and so i'm finally in the middle of that okay um yeah that's really good uh let's see i what have i been reading recently prior to that um well i mean i, just, I mean like maybe things that stick out in the last year yeah, I mean, um, let's see. I I've read um, well, a couple things by Eric LaRocca. You know, he's he's obviously a, a rising star. Um, everybody probably knows him from from his uh, breakout. Uh, things have gotten worse since we last spoke. Yeah, yeah, I love that one. Yeah, um, but I also have like gone back and been reading like some old. Um, collections of short stories by like robert block um reading you know some like jack ketchum and richard layman stuff like that um what else i'm trying to think what else that's more modern that i've been reading recently uh, what have i read oh uh samantha Col 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 i think is how you say oh, okay last name um Waif and True Crime, both novellas. They're both really good. Um, nice. Uh, what else? That's okay. For years, and uh, I will admit to this. Sorry, Adam Caesar. I was saying it's Cesare for some reason because I guess I thought Italian. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> and I'm like, now that you said it that way, I'm like, oh, of course it's just Caesar. Why? Why was I putting an emphasis on the e? I didn't know until I met him <laughs> and asked. Okay, yeah. I feel stupid, <laughs> but I mean, at least yeah. I've been writing it out, and I haven't done videos like the new Adam Cesare. <laughs> yeah. Oh, another another book I read not that long ago that's really good. Um, Ali C. Uh, wrote a another novella uh, called "Go Down Hard." That's also out uh, through Grindhouse Press. Oh, okay. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, there's been a lot of good, like, a lot of good small press stuff coming out lately. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So uh, the small press has always been. I mean, yeah, for, that's not know, finding. Let's like, not pretend like the small press hasn't always been. It's not a new thing. Yeah, exactly. putting out there's good always... stuff. Not that Big Five doesn't do good stuff too. I'm just. Oh, there's good stuff everywhere, and there's yeah. bad stuff everywhere too. But right, that's um... the thing. There's you know, <laughs> there's crap everywhere. There's good stuff everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I just think the small press is always. Uh, been the place to find the you know the new exciting voices and people yeah like the newer taking, stuff is definitely yeah things, that's people yeah. taking some chances a little bit um yeah, the yeah. big five stuff is like once the newer voices have established themselves in the small press and get a following right then they're like <laughs> look at our brand new it's like it's not new <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah that's how late stage capitalism works that is true so like given the current times that we live in and the consistent unprecedentedness of the uh real life horrors let's say um do you find that horror is like a, a refuge for you and it like calms you down i find that sort of works for me yeah uh it does uh, it always has yeah um i yeah i mean i've been i've been a horror fan since childhood um i don't you know so far back that i honestly cannot even remember like what what the first horror movie i saw was or the first horror book i read i don't even know it's just always been a part of my life um and yeah it, it's it's very soothing it's comfortable it's you know it's it's 
it's like a hug. <laughs> it's a nice warm hug. See, I swear I saw an article night. that said people that are like horror fans have actually been coping better in the last couple of years. Yeah, I've read that too. And it's funny, I actually, when everything started, uh, the pandemic, I remember saying that to, I think, uh, well, my wife and, and my in-laws, I believe. I was like, I was like, I bet horror people are going to deal with this a little well, bit. Because we have like the instruction manuals, you know, it's like, yeah. okay, shelter in place, canned food. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, I do. I do think it's, it helps you cope. I mean, there's always, even in times that were a little more precedented, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. there's always, there's always some craziness on the news or in the world. Um, so yeah, it just, it just kind of helps you cope with the world at large. And uh, certainly, certainly these days, you know, Oh, yeah. What's funny is, um, you know, there's people like you that started horror, like, as far back as you can remember. I actually remember being, like, a total scaredy cat until about 12. Like, I was mm. terrified of everything. Yeah. And then I started reading, like, Goosebumps books, and I, like, slowly eased my way into Jaws. And even after watching Jaws, I was afraid to take a bath, which makes no sense. <laughs> it's like, that shark isn't even going to fit in the tub. Well, it could be a really tiny shark. I guess a know. tiny shark. could just come right up through the drain. I mean, I'd be know. afraid in a public pool and then be like, but this is not, this is chlorinated water. I don't even think a shark could live in this. <laughs> and also, how would it get in? Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I, you know, I, I know so many people who came to horror through Goosebumps and, and Fear Street and things like that. And I, I, I had gotten into, maybe it's just my age, but I, you know, that wasn't, that wasn't around when I was, uh, when I was very young. So like I, some of my gateway things were like movies like Poltergeist. Oh, okay. Yeah. Creep show and, you know, things like that. And then a couple of years later I graduated into, you know, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So I, I dove head in <laughs> and, uh, just, just got right into it. But yeah, like I said, I don't, of, it's interesting at least, um, Use the phrase '90s kids, but I guess that's what I was. '90s kids. It seemed like most people I knew went from Goosebumps straight to Stephen King, which is like yeah. such a dramatic. <laughs> like I do remember, it was like one Christmas I got Nightmares and Dreamscapes, the hardcover, and that thing was so heavy, especially for yeah. a twelve-year-old yeah. who was a little twig. And I remember just going from like, uh, like one of those Goosebumps, like there's a thing in the basement. <laughs> um, to just like the 10 o'clock people and like, just like the boogeyman and just insane, like incredibly terrifying Stephen King stories. Right. <laughs> Which, yeah, I haven't looked back since. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Once you realize you can, you can handle that stuff, then you're. Right. Yeah. So good. much of it is, I, I remember with horror movies, especially, I was afraid I was going to puke and I didn't want to mm. puke in front of my friends or something. Um, but like, you know, X-Files was on TV and I slowly eased my way in with that. And when I realized I wasn't vomiting everywhere, <laughs> I was like, oh, I think I can do this. And then I also realized like, who gives a shit if I puke on myself? Like, who cares? <laughs> like, why was this my fear? <laughs> it's such a specific one to have. It wasn't like, I'll Whoever's freak out and I won't laundry. be able to handle it. It's like, I will throw up. <laughs> Whoever's doing the laundry would probably care. The I guess my mom would freak out. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't want to make her constantly have to clean up vomit. <laughs> um, okay, but yeah, on that note, um, thanks for coming on. Um, sure. So uh, we'll go I'll out do on a, a vomit note. Great. Yes, go out on the vomit <laughs> note. Always keep them wanting more vomit. Ugh, gross. <laughs> um, but I guess one more time for the listeners, your collection is uh, departures. departures. Yes. Brand new, just came out, uh, available online. Um, I'm sure I will. I'm waiting on copies myself, but I should have them soon. And then, you know, people could always contact me directly if they're looking for signed copies. Um, I will, I'll also be appearing at uh, Scares That Care charity oh, nice. weekend at, at the end of July. Um, so anybody in the Williamsburg, Virginia area can come by the black t-shirt table uh, black t-shirt books table and find me at, or adam caesar or matt serafini and buy some books get them signed say hello talk horror etc cetera, etc cetera. nice all good stuff to hear um yeah on my end i i 
ham-fistedly shoved in a, a thing for the press already. But yes, I recently <laughs> released uh, my second novel, Goddamn Zombie Chainsaw Murderer. It's about as fun and weird as it sounds. Uh, that is from Nick Dictating Books, of course. Uh, we also have uh, Paula Ash's We Are Here to Hurt Each Other, which is still top in the charts. I honestly can't believe it's still selling because I've never <laughs> so used to just putting out a book that sells for a couple months and that's it. Um, but I'm not I, have, I have read that too, actually. I read that recently. It's very it good. is a great collection. Yeah. Um, and then we've got uh, Maxwell Bauman's House of Blood and Teeth, which I happen to like. It's a Body Horror Haunted House novella, and we recently, um, well, we announced a little while ago, but we're going to be having a poetry collection from Tiffany Morris out in November, and I'm going to be releasing a 99-cent ebook uh, end of September for the October spooky season called The Last Halloween Above Ground. So Last Halloween Above Ground and Elegies of Rotting Stars, which is Tiffany's collection, those two covers are going to be revealed in September. So keep your eyes peeled. And uh, yeah, Scott, thanks for coming on. Thanks so much for having me. And yeah, everybody, you know, keep it scary.